Okay, we are live, but we got to let it breathe just for a moment. We'll bring on Facebook, get things cooking. All right, all right. We got one, two, and three green check marks. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. There we go. Welcome in, everybody. It is the Mile High Huddle Podcast. I'm your host, Chad Jensen. With me, as always, my fellow football priest. You know him. You love him, Zach Kelberman. Zach, we're running late tonight, but, you know, what do you expect when our producer is not around to crack the whip on us and keep us on a sketch? Uh, but as you guys know, it's not flipping. I'm sorry we're late. Sometimes things just, you know, we get talking or we have a technical difficulty or whatever. We love you and appreciate you guys bearing with us on, on that. But we always try to bring the thunder, Zach. Once we hit that go live uh, button, we try to bring it. It's Scott's fault. Well, that's our story. That's our alibi. It's Scott's fault for being on vacation. Exactly. Where does he get off thinking he can like just <laughs> like not work? Spend time with his family. Come on, I mean, Scott. Yeah, come on. But no, really, of course, we're joking. We want Scott to enjoy his and to take his time off. But, Zach, today the Denver Broncos uh, made another signing, uh, announced a former Chicago Bears offensive starter. You had the article for us at milehighhuddle.com. Break it down. Well, for anyone who's thinking that he's going to be the shoe in to replace Cushionberry at center, uh, you might want to pump the brakes. This is a depth signing, as far as I'm concerned, a camp body. And I'll say his name. It's uh, Sam Mustafer. As Chad was talking about, he spent some time in Chicago. He had 42 starts there, and then he appeared in nine games last season, mostly as a backup with the Baltimore Ravens. And I say he's a camp body or a depth signing because I, I researched into Mustafer. Uh, brother of former Broncos defensive defensive tackle, PJ Mustafer, no tackle, whatever he was. He went undrafted in 2019, Sam Mustafer. And the reason he did was because he basically tested himself out of the draft. I mean, he is not athletically gifted at all, even for a lineman. And I don't know that Zach Streif and Sean Payton can work their magic and turn him into a starter, but at minimum, he is a warm body. He does have experience, Chad, and he'll provide some sort of uh, leveling effect for Alex Forsyth and Luke Wattenberg, one of whom I think will be the starter come week one. I still think Forsyth is the leader in the clubhouse, but it's nice to have Mustafer here because you get that kind of uh, veteran failsafe. Not that, and I don't. I'm not trying to take any way anything away from the dude. Uh, he's a Bronco now, so much love and respect, obviously, but. You know, I'm I'm not expecting him to step in and and you just like understood starter at center. He's gonna have to battle, and I don't think Zach his experience combined with his relative talent and what he brings to the table is enough to just automatically um, leapfrog the, the the designs and the, the ideas Sean Payton has potentially anyway for Alex Forsythe. Now, how much? do we read into Sean Payton saying shortly after the 2023 draft that, yeah, Alex Forsyth was a seventh rounder. We felt like he was worth more than that. We see him as, you know, a future starter. Usually Zach, when he says something like that about a player, you can take it to the bank, but he's also the guy that is just like an expert at running his mouth and just like bloviating, saying a lot without saying a dang thing, but you just gotta, you know, as we inch farther into the Sean Payton era, we're getting a little savvier, I think, Zach, to be able to deduce which is which, like when you can just kind of tune out of what he's saying and then when something he says actually means something. You're 100% correct. It's it's always tough to decipher if Sean Payton's telling the truth. It's a little easier, though, Chad, with George Payton, who's a little more, you know, he he's forthcoming with the media. And something that uh, George Payton said, and I put it in the article for anyone who wants to read it at the Combine, and I quote, we feel good about Wattenberg period. We feel really good about Forsyth. So you can take take from that what you will. I'm with Chad. I do think Forsyth is the club leader to start come week one. And especially, especially I'll say it again, if the Broncos draft his former college teammate, Bo Nix, potentially at 12. Yes, indeed. The Papa Bear, as he is lovingly known, both at home and in this community, David McElrath, in the house early with a super chat. Appreciate you, big dog. David saying good evening, Broncos country. Chad, Zach, Dylan, Deacon, Scott. First round QB, hashtag MHH for life. Buckham times three and Denver Broncos for life. Thank you, big dog. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. You know, you're, you're preaching to the choir about first round QB there, Zach. It's got to be, David. I mean, there's there's literally, to me, 
no other option. You have to come out of the first round. I don't care at this point who it is, you know, relatively speaking. It could be Penix, Bo Nix. They want to move up, move up for McCarthy or move up for Drake May. I am all for it, but nothing is going to move the needle, David, like a quarterback. You can take the best edge rusher, the best corner, the best whoever. Nothing is going to do it and solve the team's problems like hitting on that first-round QB. Indeed, and there are a lot of uh, a lot of weird Zach little stars that align for a Bo Nix to Denver uh, eventuality, and that's not a prediction, but it's just really weird how much of that stuff yeah. is there. The ties, the connections, the uh, you know comparing him to Drew Brees, the processor, the fact that he's likely to still be on the board at twelve. There's a lot there, uh, but another thing I want to talk about is the Broncos brought in. Washington Southpaw quarterback Michael Penix Jr. yesterday, or was it the day before? Either way, I want to talk about that. But first, let's grab Sam Bam. We don't want to keep the Sam Bam waiting any longer than we already have. Appreciate you, big dog. He says, evening, Chad, Zach, Scott, and Broncos country. Three weeks from tonight until the draft. It's getting closer. Go Broncos. Yeah, it's weird how time flies, dude. It's weird how time flies. Three weeks, you know, in a vacuum. It seems like a long time, Zach, but it's not. It'll be here like that. It always does. It always goes so fast. We were just, you know, recapping the end of the 2023 season, and then it was the, the combine, and then it was free agency. And Chad's right. We've been doing this long enough, and I'm sure Broncos fans have been fanning long enough to know that it's going to go by in the blink of an eye. And three weeks from tonight, as Sam points out, the Broncos will have their quarterback of the future. I, for one, am really excited, Sam. So let's get to uh, a few hellos. I want to talk about uh, the quarterback the Washington quarterback coming through. I just want to get, <clears throat> pardon me, to a few hellos here. Uh, and obviously, we tip our cap to Dylan, who is a co-host now in his own right, but he also still is there every single night to help us manage the trolls on YouTube and just keep things aflowing. You know, when I, when I say keep things aflowing, I'm talking about engaging in the conversation with everybody else. We love that. Appreciate you, big dog. And he's reminding everybody, hit the like button on your way in. Share on all platforms. So important and subscribe if you haven't already. We grabbed the Sam Bam. Uh, William, what's up? Gabe, what's up? I'm, I'm just giving some shout-outs to the early birds. David, uh, Dave from Georgia's in the house. DTR's in the house. Jesse, what's up? Adam, what's up? The Duchess is in the house. What's up, Michaela? Uh, all right, let's talk about this, Zach. First of all, what's your feeling on, again, this was reported now. It's been out for about a, a day. Broncos brought in, you know, Teams are only allowed X amount. What is it? Uh, is it 30 top 30, yeah. 30 top 30 visits, right? And the Broncos, and not always do they use every single one for what it's worth, but Broncos opted to use one of those on Penix. What do you read into that? I'm pretty sure he was the first quarterback that made his official top 30 visit to the Broncos. And, you know, I, I, we don't know until we know. It could be a case where they're locking in on Penix because he's their guy, or it could be a case where they're just doing due diligence. They met with Spencer Rattler. They put him through the gauntlet. I saw a comment from uh, The Rock said that the Broncos were the toughest to me. That's what Rattler said. And um, Penix, they met with him at the Combine before his even official top 30 visit. And he said that Sean Payton was tough. He also called him a guru, and he really complimented Sean Payton's coaching abilities. We just don't know, obviously, if Penix is his guy. And if he is, then this visit has significance. If he's not, then it's just a good coach and a good general manager doing their uh, their jobs. I find it very interesting, Zach, that quarterbacks in this class are saying, dude, that was like the toughest interview we've had was with the Broncos and Sean Payton. Yeah. Now, maybe he's like this. Every single draft, Zach, but I don't, I think maybe he's putting a little bit more juice into these quarterback conversations and meetings, testing them, putting them on their toes a little bit more because they're in the market, right? They, I think it's another strong sign of how seriously the Broncos are taking the quarterback class this year. Well, remember when Sean Payton made that comment at, I think it was the combine presser where he said a lot of teams evaluate quarterbacks, but not many do it like us. And we thought that was maybe arrogance or pride or ego talking, but maybe there's something to it. Maybe their evaluation process can weed out who has it and who doesn't. And if that's the case, the Broncos are very fortunate to have a coach like Sean Payton. We got the Ronk throwing down as always. Uh, brother, I don't know what we do without you. I see you're saying uh, Sam and PJ Mustafer are siblings. Is that true, Zach? Yeah, he's the brother. There you go. See, 
I need to read Zach's reporting before I go live every day, uh, which I normally do, by the way. I'm either reading Zach's stuff or writing my own stuff. Today, I had a little something, something in the afternoon I had to take care of. But uh, the Ronk, love you, big dog, as he's talking about here, the Mustafa bros. And of course, PJ was the defensive tackle undrafted last year, right? Well, it yeah. was last year that they ended up uh, moving on from. And now he's in New Orleans, which is a kind of a weird paradox. Look at this, too. The Ronk brings up Bo Nix wants to play for Sean Payton in the Broncos. Well, heck, yeah. I think any quarterback in his right mind, Zach, would want to yeah. play for a a head coach that, you know, first of all, a team that has a genuine uh, hole at quarterback. And then also that team, hey, it would be real cool if it's not a brand new first time head coach figuring it out along the way, like a lot of these teams in the in the QB market early in the draft are but a actual bona fide guy he's won a ring he's viewed as a quarterback whisperer he's one of I mean top five offensive minds of the modern era I would hope Bo Nix would want to play for Sean Payton you bring up a great point and the last time the Broncos drafted a quarterback it was Drew Locke a significant quarterback you know in the first couple rounds but look at who the Broncos coaches were look at who they were delivering Drew Locke to a first-year head coach in Vic Fangio, defensive guy who we come to find out, Chad, had no interest in the offensive side of the ball, and a, a rookie coordinator in Scangarello. This was in 2019. And because of the Drew Locke failure, some Broncos fans don't want them to, to get another rookie quarterback, but you'd be delivering that QB to not a rookie coach, to not an experienced coach, not one who's just defensively oriented. Sean Payton is one of the best to ever do it. And... That's what brings me hope. They're going to go through their lumps. They're going to take their bumps, and it's going to be a rocky season. But knowing that they're in safe hands with someone like Peyton brings me comfort. Indeed. And by the way, Drew Locke is the last quarterback the Broncos drafted, and I had to like double-check my own memory. I've had such a busy last month that I'm like, I better double-check that. 2019, right, Zach? Okay. Yeah. Uh, one, 2020, nope. 2021, nope. 2022, nope. 2023, nope. So four or five years without drafting a Q, uh, you kind of understand it in year one of the Russ, why they might not have drafted a quarterback that year, especially not just because they expected him to be a franchise guy, but they were missing uh, a, a few picks thanks to the trade. But man, you should try. That's a position in hindsight. And just as a matter of course, NFL teams should churn and burn until and unless you have a bona fide guy that you can bank on. Jesse, What's up, dude? Thank you for the super chat, my dog. I really appreciate you. Even if it's not your first super chat at MHH, I know it's one of your first. So really welcome. Thank you, buddy. Helping us keep the lights on. He says, Sean Payton is serious about his QB weeding them out, Zach. Four years since they drafted a quarterback and seven years since they drafted an offensive tackle. If you can believe it, Garrett Bowles being the last, I look for those two uh, facts to change come April 25th, 26th, 27th. And Jesse, that's the kind of the same point I was making. It's such an inexact science. And there's a chance that the Broncos are not going to hit on the guy, but I feel confident that Sean Payton's leading the charge. And I feel confident that Sean Payton will find his guy. We just can guess until the 25th about who that guy is really is well it's like nick and carl talked about tuesday night that you know according to cliss you know there are three positions that are really on the table for the broncos in round one quarterback edge and was it corner i want to yeah. say uh that's a really nice smoke screen in my opinion the broncos are going quarterback dude they do not have a choice luke wrote about this yesterday uh go give it a read I'm trying to remember who the original source was. Was it ESPN? Uh, but anyway, Broncos, or no, it was NFL.com. I just don't remember who on, at NFL.com. But Broncos rated the worst current quarterback situation in the NFL. Like the worst, which came with a prediction. Look for him to trade up. Zach, do you agree that it's the worst quarterback <laughs> situation currently in the league? Yeah, because you have only two quarterbacks under contract, and they are Jared Stidham, who has how many starts as a pro? What, five or six, something like that? And then Ben DiNucci is the only other quarterback, probably a practice squad guy who has, I think, two starts with the Cowboys a few years ago. So, yeah, I'd say it's the worst. Yeah, so Stidham, for what it's worth, uh, you're 
he has four career starts, two in Denver this past season, and then two the year prior as a Raider. Give him too much credit then. Uh, and then uh, Gucci Danucci. Let's let's double check him. He's got a start. Okay, so five combined. A uh, start. A start. Uh, yeah. So five combined. And you know, if it's 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 kind of like the 2020 Broncos. If one of those quarterbacks is a guy you have is young and ha you have some investment in and there's some actual belief in a in a future and a ceiling you know you don't get too caught up in the fact that you, they've only got five starts under the belt like drew Locke did going into year two but what did they do they brought in jeff driscoll was their hedge and then kind of halfway through uh i'll say what was it something like september they brought in or maybe october blake bortles remember that for like a cup of coffee um anyway my I point being here that. all things being equal yeah, it would be nice to have a, a, a quarterback with more experience, Zach. But to me, it's straight up about talent. They are, I mean, Danucci, hey, nice to have him around if you're in a super desperate situation. But like Jared Stidham, man, he, he got a lot of people's hopes up in Denver over those couple of games, especially the Niners game the year prior. But dude, it was fool's gold. He'll get the ball out on time. I don't want to like take too much away from him, but we know what he is. He's a jag. He's just a guy. Um, let's shift gears here real fast. Lawrence jumping in on Facebook with some stars. Love you, big dog. He says, Sean Payton can't pick a quarterback to save his life. Running back is a different story though. I wonder, I mean, obviously Zach, he's being a little hyperbolic about the, to save his life thing, but like how much has Sean, has Sean Payton really been tested as a QB drafter, right? Uh, he had Drew Brees for 14, 15 years, whatever it was. I'm trying to think of some of the quarterbacks that the Saints might have drafted over that time. Besides, was Taysom? What was Taysom Hill? I think he was a quarterback. I could be wrong. Well, of course he was a quarterback. But what I'm saying is, what what what? what I can't remember if he was drafted or if he was an undrafted guy. Oh, Sean he was, talked about that. Um, I don't. He might have been undrafted. undrafted. Yeah, undrafted. So uh, I don't know. I mean, let's see. Bear with me, real quick, Zach. In fact. I want to circle back on this. Yeah. Grab our boy Troy here while I, I do a quick little bit of research, and I'll I'm, I'll be listening. Well, I want to give my thoughts on Lawrence's yes. uh, comment as well. But Troy, 999 Super, thank you so much, Troy, as always, becoming a foundational member of the podcast. Troy goes, hey, guys, just supporting. Do you think the veteran center equals a rookie quarterback starting sooner rather than later? Um, I don't know that the correlation there is to be made, Troy. I think the Broncos just wanted someone with experience. I mean, in that room, how many starts do Wattenberg and Forsyth have combined? I think it's zero. So you needed someone to have a, a sort of a veteran presence they can maybe learn from. Um, but regardless, we talked about it at the start of the pod tonight. The plan always when Cushenberry left was to groom Forsyth into that starting role. And um, again, the only connection that can be made at center is if Forsyth does start and the Broncos draft Bo Nix, they play together at Oregon. It'd be like this from day one. Literally. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping, honestly, like some of our draft guys don't love Bo Nix, but I'm telling you, in a Sean Payton scheme, Bo Nix could be a thing. Yeah. And if uh, if his center is a guy that his, his NFL center is a guy, he's who snapped the ball to him. They make calls at the line of scrimmage for for, you know, they have that experience. That's a huge plus. But I do think it has nothing. It doesn't really in any way, shape or form the signing of Mustafa. It doesn't. Uh, indicate the direction the Broncos are going at quarterback much. I think it's just a hedge considering, as Zach mentioned, the relative starting inexperience. But get this at, at center. Get this, Zach. Over Sean, going back to Lawrence, I'm going to bring it back up so we can do some scratch and sniff, follow along. We're all on the same page here. Sean Payton's history as uh, head coach of the New Orleans Saints, right? Gets there in 2006. The first quarterback he drafted, because remember, year one, he also successfully recruited Drew Brees. So the first quarterback the Saints drafted of the Peyton era was Sean Canfield out of Oregon State, uh, the seventh round, 2010. Okay, so it's like a flyer on a dude. We'll see if we can maybe develop him, right? Next, this is the biggest investment they ever made in the draft while Peyton was there. And I felt dumb for not immediately remembering this because this was a guy from our backyard, Garrett Grayson, right? Formerly of the CSU Rams. He was a third round pick in 2015. 
hung around like four years or so with the Saints, but he made no starts because Drew Brees is the man. Uh, basically ended up locked on New Orleans uh, practice squad and then eventually had some time with a couple other teams. And then there was a Tommy Stevens, Zach, a seventh rounder in 2020. All right. Uh, then in 2021, last one, and this was Peyton's last season, fourth rounder Ian Book out of Notre Dame. So that's the entire draft history of any quarterback under a Sean Payton team. You made one point already that I was going to make. I don't know why people hold Drew Brees against Sean Payton. Like, he should have developed a quarterback when you have a first ballot Hall of Famer still in his prime. I mean, when he had to navigate the post breeze life. He tried to do that, but it's so tough finding a quarterback that can match up to uh breeze's standard. Another thing, Lawrence, really quickly is that Sean Payton was this close to trading up in 2017 for Patrick Mahomes. He was literally one pick away before Kansas city sniped him. So he obviously knows where he wants to go. And the other thing is, yeah, he hasn't drafted a Q that's, that's been a star in the league, but it's what he's done with every quarterback in the post breeze era, the Simeons, the the Bridgewaters, the Jameis Winstons, and dare I say, even the Russell Wilsons of the world. That's what's so encouraging. So Lawrence, you might point out the fact that he never hit on a star. He never really built one up. He has made chicken salad out of the most vile chicken excrement you can find in the NFL. And that's all that really matters. Sam Bam jumping in again. Thank you, my dog. He says, do you think Penix being left-handed will have any effect on his draft stock with the Broncos? My gut feel is Peyton wants a right-handed quarterback. I think most NFL coaches are, you know, by default, they want a righty just because, I mean, it's easier for the scheme and players are used to catching balls from right-handed throwers. And, you know, when you talk about the reps, Zach piling up by the thousands as far as a receiver, seeing the way the ball's spinning coming at him. Uh, it, it is, you throw a different variable in there to where it's spinning the other way coming off a left hand and it is a slight adjustment. You can overcome it, but usually Zach, those South paws, they have to bring something that goes above and beyond in order to kind of overcome that relative to their draft stock. And in a, in a vacuum, I hate to use that phrase again here on twice on in the same night, maybe Penix would be viewed that way. But with his draft history and look, or his injury history, I know he was cleared of everything, but teams are still trust. Teams are still a little freaked out by his injury jacket, even though he's cleared. All right, cool. But that's not the, the issue wasn't ever, Zach, is he injured going into the draft? We, of course, he wasn't. He was came off a very productive year at, Wa at Washington, almost went the distance in the college uh, football championship. Uh, it was how could. It's the history, right? It's it's not necessarily that he's injured now. It's that is he a prone, injury prone guy? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, Sam, there's like a a, a three stool or three legged stool when you want to look at um uh, Michael Penix. Chad mentioned the injury jacket, and yeah, he's been better about that. His age is another one. He's going to be 24 next month, and that's held against Bo Nix, so the same should apply to uh, Michael Penix. The other thing with him, mechanically, I don't worry about the left-handed too much. I mean, it is a small consideration or a moderate consideration. It's his processing in the pocket and what came out in the title game, not great. And it's also his work in the middle of the field, the intermediate routes, the, the short area of the field where Russell Wilson struggled and where Sean Payton wants to uh, maximize. That is a strength of someone like Bo Nix. And they offer each their own pros and cons. I could talk myself into Michael Penix. Is he my QB1, QB2, QB3? No, no, and no. But if Sean Payton thinks he's the guy, I think he can make work with Sean Payton. And last point, Chad, what I do like about Penix, there was a picture I saw on Twitter where he put plays on his bathroom mirror. Like he actually wrote different plays down and uh, different designs. I thought for a, a football guy like that, it's pretty impressive. Dude, I love that kind of thing. You know, like it shows that it's not only a, a player who is – trying to constantly like better himself from a knowledge and a football IQ perspective and his scheme and all that. But like, it kind of gives you a window into dude's mindset. Like yeah. when I was in college, uh, I, I took a, a, a few different sales jobs over that time. And I realized very quickly life, uh, as a commissioned salesman, it's not so much how, um, how 
much you know the product of what you're selling, Zach. It's not so much like, are you the most dynamic, charismatic dude to ever walk the earth? It's really about like mindset. And I understood from some of the veterans around me that you actually have to work to not only better yourself knowledge wise, but like to cultivate the right mindset. And so I would get recommended, hey, check out this book, check out this book, check out this book. And me being a big reader and stuff, I'm like, dope, give it to me and I'd read them. And one of the things I learned, I can't even remember what book it was, Zach, but one of them was, hey, you know, positive verbal reinforcement to yourself. All right. So like in a salesman perspective, quick derailment here, bear with me. In a salesman context, all right, you know, you want to, you want to be confident. You want to uh, exude certain things when, as far as how, what the impression of you is with customers, et cetera. So like they would say, you know, this thing, hey, write on a post-it note, something like you're, I'm the man, um, I am confident, this and that. And then like post them up in different places where, around your donuts, right? The donuts you make every day. So like your mirror in your bathroom, put them up in your car, put them up in different places. And not only Zach, that you're seeing it, but when you see it, verbalize it, say it out loud, let yourself hear yourself saying those things. And I'm a big believer in that stuff. Ask any of the guys that do podcasts at MHH. Uh, these are things we talk about often. And it shows me, Zach, Michael Penix. I know that we're not talking about mindset um, per se, like post-its in his bathroom. We're talking about plays and whatnot but it is a window into the, how seriously this dude takes everything between the ears, which I like. I can confirm that about Chad firsthand. And I'm also the same way. I mean, when I first broke into this business, I had a little post-it note above my desk that I wrote the position and job that I wanted. And I looked at it every single day because I believe in the power of positive affirmation and, and yep. thoughts become things. But this is not a Tony Robbins podcast. This is a Broncos podcast. And one thing about Penix, and you're right, Chad, it also demonstrates to you that he's all about football. And that was the big thing in 2016 when they drafted Paxton Lynch was that he was not all about football. Every, it was about Fortnite or whatever game, Call of Duty, whatever game he was playing back then. It's it's a it's a green flag to me. And it wasn't just for, for cloud or social media likes. That's who Michael Penix is. And it's a green flag when a player cares about football to that extent. Well said. Uh, thank you, Sam. Love you, big dog. We've got Ronald Putnam jumping in. Good to see you tonight, my friend. It uh, has been a minute. Appreciate the super. He says, hi, guys. How about we trade down twice in the first round, pick up three second round picks? We could get some solid uh, players. You bet your bottom dollar you could get some solid players, no doubt about it. But in so doing, what's your plan then, Ron, at quarterback? Are you banking on, say, Penix or Nick still be in there at whatever point you end up ceasing your trade back. Cause that's the biggest thing is look in a normal draft, Zach, like in a normal draft year where the Broncos are not basement dwellers and in desperate need of a quarterback, I'm I'll be right there with you about trading down and stockpiling picks, yeah. you know, to quote George Payton, the more darts you have to throw at the board, the better. But this time around, man, you have you're just outside the top 10 uh you're within striking distance uh i don't want to risk not getting a, a one of the top quarterbacks of the class so that's my only thing here is i feel you on that ron but i'm also a little cautious I'm pretty sure Ronald Putnam is just George Payton's burner account because this is what Payton would do if given the autonomy and Payton did do this when given the autonomy in 2020 one and 2022 and to an extent last year when Sean Payton was still new but it's not George Payton's autonomy any longer this is Sean Payton's team and I don't see Sean Payton trading down and stockpiling picks Sean Payton is going to be aggressive to get his quarterback and if he can't move up well you stay at 12 and someone should fall into your lap whether that's Michael Penix or Bo Nix or whoever and you can't really overthink that though I will say and it's just a gut feeling. I have no information to really go on. I think if the Broncos stay at 12, Chad, I can absolutely see them move up into the second round um, on day two. There's just so much talent in that round relative to the Broncos' needs, and I don't know that Peyton can resist the temptation for that long, if at all. Exactly. Well said. And, Ron, thank you, brother, for the support and contributing to the conversation tonight, my friend. Uh, Dave from Georgia, a legendary mythical member of our community jumping in a bona fide super chat superstar thank you dave 
He says, do you think we have to draft a quarterback at 12 or maybe trade back a few spots? Do you have to? No, you don't have to. But what are you going to do if, let's say, you talk yourself, Zach, into a trade back? It's just the package is too good. Someone's offering you something, and you're like, all right, we're going to move back to you know 25. I can't remember who's picking 25 right now. Anyway, but and we're going to just – we think that's – still in the neighborhood of where Bo Nix is going to be, for example. And you trade back, and he's not there. He gets taken. You're like, that gummit. now what? Uh, well, is Penix a first-round guy? Is he a bona fide first-round guy? I don't, I'm don't. i not sure of that, and I'm not sure, Zach, of what how the Broncos view that. I think the answer is they, they view him as closer to a first-round pick than not because yeah. they hosted him on a top-30 visit, although that's not like an absolute indicator, but still – I just don't want to risk the shot at a quarterback. You can trade back a million times over uh, after you get a quarterback in, in future years. But like, you know, what, what did we learn the other day, Zach? Uh, you know, six quarterbacks going in the first round is the record. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, 2018, they call it the Hall of Fame class. You had to get a few of those darts out, right? Not all those quarterbacks ended up making it. But Josh Allen and Lamar, they lead the way in terms of NFL accomplishments. Yep. Baker Mayfield's right behind them. But then you had a few burner offers, you know, like Sam Darnold and, and Josh Rosen. So you need to try and get one of these guys in a very quarterback top heavy class. And take it back a year further, like I talked about a few minutes ago, 2017, when Maho uh, when uh, Sean Payton tried to move up for Patrick Mahomes. He is not going to experience FOMO twice. I promise you that. He learned his mistake once, and he's going to rectify it this time around. And I feel like, Dave, you almost have to. Not you have to, but you almost have to, because who is right behind the Broncos at 13? And I've been pounding this drum for weeks now. That'd be the Raiders, who are desperate for a quarterback with their new coach, Antonio Pierce. They like Michael Penix a lot. Maybe they like they like Bo Nix. In my opinion, it doesn't matter where you get the quarterback if you think he's the guy. You could chance it and trade down a few spots, but to me, if they want Bo Nix, it doesn't matter if they get Bo Nix at 12 or 32. As long as they get their guy by any means necessary, that's how it should work. Well said. Mike Edel jumping in with a generous super chat. Thank you, my brother. Another bona fide superstar in the house. He says, hey, Chad, Zach, in Broncos country, how much does delivery affect route timing? Kurt Warner on his QB show wasn't a fan of Knicks. Knicks is my favorite as far as someone who is attainable. Go MHH. Uh, delivery. So I'm trying to understand exactly what you mean by that, like throwing motion or the anticipation with which they get the ball out. That's I'm not sure exactly what you mean. Uh, I think, though, Zach, he's talking about basically it's throwing motion. <clears throat> Mike, correct us if we're wrong on that, but what's your answer uh, for, for our big dog here? That's how I interpreted the question is his throwing motion or his mechanics. And, you know, Kurt Warner can have his opinion, but for every negative you hear about Bo Nix, you see like three or four really positive interviews that he's had uh, one with Doug Farrar of uh, I think football outsiders uh, one with RG three who works for ESPN. Now. I mean, the thing about Bo Nix is he stays on schedule. He plays within the confines and the strictures of an offense. He knows where to go with the ball from down to down. He can make all the throws. I mean, his deep ball is not his forte, but in the short and middle parts of the field, that's where Sean Payton wants a quarter uh, quarterback to be accurate and deadly. And that's where Bo Nix thrives. So Difference of opinion, I guess. Yeah. I haven't found on the time I've spent watching Bo Nix as a prospect, you know, the pulling up some of his tape uh, on uh, from his last couple of years in college and watching him, nothing ever jumped out to me that was like particularly awkward about his, his delivery. Yeah. But I'll, I'll look at it. And man, when you got a Hall of Famer like Kurt Warner saying something about it, I'll go back and, and look at it again. But thank you, Mike. Uh, let's let's jump into some Facebook folks real fast, and then we got uh, we got Naj, we got uh, KB uh, waiting as well on super chat. But Phil, we love you down in Tucson. You know this, my dog. You prove every single day that Broncos country is not a geographic location; it's a state of being, baby. He says, "Good evening, Chad and Zach. Going to be great when we get to the draft and find out Peyton has a QB we haven't even thought about." LOL. So much fun guessing what's in the minds of the coach and GM. Hashtag Buckham MHH for life. 
Yeah, you know, normally I really relish what he's talking about, the fun of guessing. And it is fun. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. It's just that it's been so long, Zach, since they drafted a quarterback or even took a shot at one in the first round. And there's such a dire need for it that, like, man, if I was in that front office, I would be – if there was a deal to be made for me to move up and really either improve or guarantee my odds of getting one, I would have already made that deal. But maybe that's why, Zach, that's what separates, say, a, a NFL front office expert exec from a guy like me who talks about it for a living is that they understand restraint and maybe, like, the long game and stuff like that. But that's where things are at, dude. This team, I agree, worst quarterback situation currently in the NFL. I think it's fun to an extent to play the guessing game and speculate, but we've been doing it for three months now. And it's, I, I listen back to the pod sometimes and I feel like I'm just saying the same things over and over. I'm not providing much insight, but it's, it's, there's only so many quarterbacks we can connect to the Broncos and so many realistic candidates to become the next Broncos quarterback that we want all want the draft to just get here already and find out to me at this point, it's a little anticlimactic after so long, Chad, wondering and wondering and wondering it's like okay let's get it over with and find out who's going to be leading the broncos in 2024 we're at 36 minutes by the way guys so we're getting a little bit uh on the back nine so to speak of tonight's show any burning topics questions super chats stars get them in now we'll make sure we get to you before we dip but zach relative to you know the circular conversations that have that kind of take shape during the off season whether it's a kind of unique off season like this or even a normal off season in our uh history is just be glad you're not doing radio anymore. Could you imagine yeah. doing that three hours a day? Nope. You'd start like forgetting even what your what your takes are. Zach and I had an opportunity to uh, take our show to the Denver Airwaves a couple of years back. Was it last year? Not just barely 23. It was 22, yeah, right? It was 22. And uh, it was a great opportunity of which we were flattered and very grateful. We took We took the opportunity. But we found that it wasn't for us because no, you ended up having to like contrive kind of like conversations and, and positions and takes uh, in order to kind of keep the conversation going in the radio way and, and like uh, wedge driving and, you know, constantly Zach only talking about the surface area topics that, cause think about it, what's radio. It's mostly, it's not absolute, but you're, it's mostly people who just jumped in their car at lunch or on their way to work, and they, they're they going through the stations listening for something that, that they can connect with in between stop A and stop B. And so you're you're told, and in, in, it's not exactly a must or a mandate, Zach, but it's strongly suggested. You keep the topics that you're going to talk about, surface topics that any Broncos fan, if they're tuning in, immediately know what you're talking about. In other words, don't be trying to talk about even the backup quarterback. Don't even be trying to talk about uh, some no-name veteran offensive lineman they signed today because the average listener doesn't know who that person is, couldn't care less. They want to hear about the top-level topics. And like right now, Zach, what would that be? That would be draft, right, quarterbacks. You'd basically be living there. What's going on with Russ here and there? Like uh, why is Justin Simmons, the market for him, so cold? Things that every fan, their ears perk up, they recognize those names, they're listening. That got real boring to us. Yeah, and it did, and it felt like work. I, I'm yeah. sure you agree, Chad. This doesn't feel like work, and I didn't want my comment to come off insulting. And I know Broncos country feels the same way. They've been guessing and wondering and waiting and, and seeing who the Broncos are going to take and who the Broncos are interested in, but I think we can all agree. It's like, okay, we have three more weeks. Please let them go fast, and let's find out already. George Fox jumping in on Facebook as well to say, we have to trust in the coaches as to whoever they think can do the job the way they want it done. Broncos for life, MHH for life. I still stand on this. I, I tweeted every once in a while, Zach, when I get a question about quarterbacks in Sean Payton, I trust. I do yeah. trust in him on this. I, I got to disagree with our boy Lawrence Rivera. You know we love you, Lawrence. I don't agree in any way, shape, or form that he, Sean Payton can't draft a quarterback to save his life. I think that if you're in the business of drafting a quarterback, just be like the Broncos are. Thank God. Thank the football gods as a fan that you're not George Payton and Vic Fangio approaching this or George Payton and, you know, Vance Joseph approaching this. Sean Payton, look, John Elway, Zach, Hall of Fame quarterback. Can't take that away from 
could not identify slash develop quarterback talent to save his life. It was kind of a, a weird paradox. But Sean Payton is a guy that's been teaching and developing quarterback since he got in the league and is a former quarterback himself. He shares that with Elway, obviously nowhere close to the level Elway was as a yeah. player. But I have the utmost confidence in Sean Payton's ability to share a brain with George, George to get the scouting department and everything uh, on a level and in line with what Sean Payton is looking for at quarterback. You know, I say, I agree, Sean Payton, we trust because we have to. We have no other choice but to trust Sean Payton. He's going to be here for the long haul. He's making, he's the second highest paid coach in the NFL, and he and he has the gravitas to uh, pull off a, a quarterback developmental move like he's talking about. But that's why, Chad, we can give our opinions, and we have for three months now. It doesn't matter who we want or anyone else wants. It matters who Sean Payton wants. And once he lands on his guy, no matter who that is, he has to do everything in his power, and I mean everything in his power, to get his guy this draft. Lando, what's up, dude? Good to see you tonight on uh, Facebook. Appreciate you. He says, good evening, Priest. Just showing some love. Thank you, my dog. You know, we really, really appreciate you. And it's again, it's great seeing you. Uh, in the chat this evening. Uh, Mike jumping in again to say they were talking about, uh, well, he says May's wind up, but I want to say his super was on the subject of Wasn't it Nick's. Yeah. Nick's. So I think he meant the wind up. Yeah. So it was the throwing motion, et cetera. Thank you for clarifying that, Mike. Um, we got uh, the BLD jumping in. What's up, buddy? Saying now with Buffalo trading digs, do you see Denver trading Cortland Sutton, Zach, for draft picks? I don't know. I mean, this is one of the case cases to me where it could be like a diminishing return. Like, would you rather have Cortland Sutton on the team or a fifth and sixth round draft pick or something along those lines? You ideally, I would keep him for this reason alone, because you take Cortland Sutton away from the receiving core. You have no one that you can truly count on as an alpha. Josh Reynolds, not an alpha. Marvin Mims, not yet an alpha. Tim Patrick, we don't know what he's going to do. Brandon Johnson, little Jordan Humphrey, Jalen Virgil, they're all backup types. You need a wide receiver one. He's coming off a great season. Unless you get an offer that you can't refuse, like the Godfather, like a two or a three, then I'd keep him, Chad, honestly. Dude, it's funny you bring up Godfather because I've been binging Godfather lately. I don't, you know, when, when I do go on a Godfather binge, I usually barely watch godfather three because it's just yeah. weird Terrible. it's not good yeah. uh but anyway i've been binging that and then it took me down a marlon brando rabbit hole where i was like learning all this stuff about brando and like oh yeah you know streetcar named desire and a few of his the movies that made him a famous actor and stuff but i love i love the godfather especially godfather one uh okay the Duchess, we love you. We appreciate you. Oh, oh, I almost skipped KB and Naj. Uh, don't worry, guys. You're next. The Duchess jumping in. If nobody picks up Justin Simmons, is there a chance of him coming back at a discounted rate? Thank you, Michaela. It's so good to see the a Mount Rushmore member in our community, near and dear to our hearts. Uh, look forward to talking to you. Is it Monday? It's Monday, right? It's going to be dope. Superstar segment. Um, Zach, I wrote about this today, kind of trying to understand why the market for Justin Simmons is cold, right? He's been a free agent now for, let's just say a month, basically. And um, a guy coming literally off a of pro bowl and then one year removed from being the co-leader of interceptions in the NFL can't get a job. Why is that? Uh, there are multiple reasons that I get into in the article, Zach, but then I even say, look, Adam Schefter's talking about him probably having to take a one-year deal uh, to have a job in 2024. And uh, so if you're the Broncos and you know the market softened for him big time, why wouldn't you try and kick those tires? I mean, I would, but if I'm Justin Simmons, there might be too much water under that bridge for me to countenance that when I could probably get a one year, well, one year deal with almost anybody, you know, like as long as I'm not asking for too much. And I think by this point, Zach, he's probably come around to the reality that he's not going to find 14, 15 million out there. Because the safety market overall Weird. has been devalued over the last couple of years by the league. Absolutely. And I feel like if there was a chance of Simmons coming back at a reduced contract, he, he would have just been restructured and they would have kept him. They've released him in a cost cutting move. And I don't know that um, if it's just the money, maybe Simmons is asking for too much or he overvalued his uh, his market value. But he is a 30 what, 30, 31 year old safety. And entering, I entering his age 31 season to quote you. 
there you go. And I wouldn't categorize him. He's not a, an Ed Reed or Troy Palomalu. If he was, he would have gotten an offer by now. I mean, he's a pretty good, you know, at sometimes great, sometimes above average safety. And um, it, like Chad said, tough market out there, but I don't see him coming back to Denver. And it's not just the money either. Why would you want to come back, even if the money was comparable, to go through another rebuild? This guy hasn't sniffed a winning season, let alone a playoff game. Let the man join a contender and play out the back nine of his career on a uh, a winning team. I honestly think that's part of why his value is not what he thought it was, is that NFL teams have never seen him a part of something great. You know, you've seen some great individual performances from Justin Simmons. I mean, he's a four-time All-Pro, two-time Pro Bowler with eight years in the league, you've seen him do some amazing things. And one of them uh, is the least heralded in terms of accolades because it didn't come with an accolade. And that was in 2018, Vance Joseph's final season, literally starting at every position in the secondary uh, before Vic Fangio showed up. But he just never got to be a part of any team success. That's not his fault. Uh, That was more of organizational incompetence. But still, that's part of whatever the shine is on you, whatever the – book is on and perception of you as a player is tied to what people in the league have seen you accomplish with your team. So I wish him the best. I hope he finds a contract Zach worth 20 million a year. Like that's the caliber of cat he is. And he's just such a good dude as well. Um, But I don't see him coming back to Denver, unfortunately, Michaela, but that's honestly something I hope I'm wrong on. Naj brother. We love you. We appreciate you taking the leaderboard tonight on individual super chat. Thank you, buddy. Uh, mythical Naj al in the house. And by the way, Naj, uh, we got to get you on for one of the, get you scheduled for a superstar segment, dude. We got the Duchess scheduled on the eighth. Uh, let me, I'm, I'm making sure I'm not like speaking out my rear end on that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the eighth. So next Monday, let's get you on soon, bro. He says, Hey brothers, hope all is well. Personally, I'm hoping we see Penix under center. Come the meet and greet. Yes. Naj has been to every single meet and greet. And let me tell you something. When we talk about hashtag state of being members of our community, my dog comes from literally the opposite side of the continent to be there for these meet and greets. And uh, he's ride or die. Love you, big dog. Can't wait to see you. But Zach, he's thinking, I hope we see some some Penix in the orange and blue come the fall. I, I can get on board with it, even though it's not my first choice. As long as it's not... <laughs> Jared Stidham under center or Ryan Tannehill under center or whoever some, you know, no upside, low value retread. As long as it's not them come to meet and greet, I'll be fine. All right. uh, Let's grab KB. Thank you, bro, for being patient. Uh, Jumping in with a super, a MHH longtime super chat superstar spent whatever it was year, year and a half, maybe almost two years. Uh, as a staff writer before his uh, his career kind of carried him off and he had to focus on that. Love having you every single night, dude. You're the man, KB. He says, question from last night. Would you trade the Bills uh, pick 12 for a boatload of picks, including 28? You still might get Knicks. Zach, what do you got? No, I mean, that's dropping down too far. If KB, if I knew the Broncos would get Knicks, I'd probably make that trade because I want to stockpile capital, but we don't know. And I'm not going to take the chance of losing out on a quarterback. And it's not just the Raiders behind you. Another team could come up in the 20s and get Bo Nix before you're up at 28. If you want to drop down a few spots and pick up a second or pick up a third, fine, and still get a quarterback, but dropping down 28. what would that be? 16. I can't map 16 spots mm-hmm. with, and then with the possibility of losing Knicks and maybe even Bo Penix, no picks are worth chanting a quarterback because no other position you can get with those picks is as valuable as landing your franchise quarterback. That's my opinion. If you were to do that, you'd better get real comfortable with the prospect of either Jarrett Stidham as your QB one for real, or like Michael Pratt, uh, <sighs> you know, uh, what's the kid Rattler, you know, mm-hmm. that would be my first post round one option would be Rattler, but I still am all about not just holding the fort and staying put at 12. I'm trying to move up. I'm trying to get one of the yeah. dudes in this class. Like I I'm not taking no for an answer on that. I'm finding a way I'm making a way. Um, you're dead in the water till you get a franchise quarterback. That's the bottom line. 
Now you could suffer, you could do this, KB, stockpile, load up, miss on the Q, top cues in the class, and go, you know what? We're gonna go all in on a queue next year. And we're gonna use this draft to basically start restocking the roster so that when we get that queue, he hits the ground running. But there's no guarantee that you you know. You're not guaranteed tomorrow, let alone that you're going to have a job and all that next year if you're Sean Payton. I think he's aware of that. RD, um, probably our last super of tonight, jumping in up in Canada, north of the 49th parallel. So good to see you, big dog. I feel like we did a great job on O-line depth, but didn't give enough love to the D-line. After getting a quarterback, I think there is a D-line uh, D -line men worth trading up for. Zach, um, I don't know how versed you are in the 2024 defensive line class, but I want to start with this. The Broncos did make one move in the free agent realm. Uh, Malcolm Roach, bringing him in as a defensive lineman, kind of a D tackle, but not a name that you're really writing home about. It still seems and feels very thin. And when you, when you factor that Zach in with the reality that their pass rush is not good and they were one of the worst run-stopping defenses in the NFL last year with the collection they had last year, it's a little bit alarming. Remember when I said earlier that I could see if the Broncos stay at 12 to trade uh, up into the second round because there's so much talent? This is why I said that. If you go Q in the first, I think defensive line, the front seven has to be your, your second biggest priority. There's two players I like in the second round who are you know considered second-round prospects. Darius Robinson being one, I would love for the Broncos to, if they have to move up and acquire him. The other one they probably definitely would have to move up, move up for would be Tavondre Sweat. You put Tavondre Sweat in the middle of the defense next to Zach Allen. That's how you start to create interior pressure. That makes everyone else's jobs in the front seven easier. And he also even in the secondary, because they don't have to cover for so long. Big fan of Sweat. I don't know if the Broncos would trade up, but that's my defensive lineman that I would get if I would be trading up. All right, we got KB jumping in again to say none of these guys are franchise quarterbacks. That's a waste of a premium pick. If they stay at 12, it should be an edge or a defensive tackle. Look, if if you're sold, if you're Sean Payton and you don't believe there's a, a franchise quarterback, let alone multiple potential franchise quarterbacks in the class that could be worth a trade up or even staying put at 12, if you really believe that, then yeah, you try and trade back. I would disagree with you on that, that none of these guys are franchise quarterbacks. Uh, but, you know, it's still legal to disagree on things and be friends. You know, we're going to make it. Yeah, I mean, that's what's the, the great thing about this country is everyone's entitled to their own opinion, KB. So if you think the Broncos should bypass quarterback and take an edge, it's your opinion. And uh, we'll just have to see what happens on the 25th. So my question for you then, KB, is, uh, as many as six quarterbacks are projected as going in the first round is if that's not a res reflection of the caliber of the players in question or the class, what is it reflecting? Just simply the need and the demand food for thought. Curious about your take there. Thank you, buddy. Sam Bam jumping in with a third super chat tonight you, to say, Nope, this is the last super of the night. Go Broncos. And Zach, I, I wanna I wanted to end it with a plum there and let him get it, get the satisfaction, but Tom spoiled yeah. it. Sam, we'll st you know what? We're still gonna read your super chat last before we dip out. So we're gonna give you that. Tom jumping in, thank you, brother. He says I would have given up anything to get our guy. Our O line is the best part of our team. We got decent receivers, deep at running back, and cap space next year on on uh, all defense. I think is what he's saying. Great show. Thanks, bro. Uh, yeah, the O-line doesn't get enough credit. I don't know that I would maybe say it's the best part of our team, but it's definitely the most underrated uh, unit on the on the Broncos. Yeah, I said the other night that, you know, arguably four out of five positions are pretty solid heading into the season. And when's the last time we could say that? It's been one or two at most. They'll, they'll replace Cushionberry with somebody, and I think that McGlinchey should settle down in year two. And uh, it could become a quick strength for a while for the Broncos. Tom, love you, big dog. And for the satisfaction again, Sam, this is the last Super Chat of the night. Go Broncos. And with that, we got a few messages for you guys, and then we got a dip. 
be sure we don't I don't I don't know where the banner is. I guess it changed, but uh be sure to follow the uh, the pod on Twitter at the MHH pod. You can follow the main account on Twitter at Mile High Huddle. There we go. At the MHH pod. Be sure you're following if you haven't already. Uh follow Chad on Twitter at Chad and Jensen, myself at Kelberman NFL. Don't forget about Scott or producer at Scout Kennedy. If you guys want some merch like we're rocking each and every podcast, check out MHHmerch.com. Get you some. Also, drop us a like at facebook.com slash mile high huddle pod. You can find us on Instagram at mile underscore high underscore huddle. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, make sure, make sure, make sure you're leaving your football priest a five star review for a chance to win some merch each and every single month. But if anything, all please, please, please subscribe, like, and share this video and every video you see on the MHH channel. It really helps us grow and reach more Broncos fans. Just like you, baby. That's right. A mile high salute to our great Super Chat superstars and supporters tonight. David, the Papa Bear, McElrath, Sam Bam, Jesse, Troy, Lawrence. We got Ronald. We got Dave from Georgia. Mike. We got the, did I already say KB? No, we got KB, of course. Lando, Phil McLaughlin. We got George Fox. We got BLD2342. We got the Duchess, of course, RD. We got uh, Naj. We've got. Oh, Tom, and then an 11th hour. Look at this, an 11th hour super from the Lady D jumping in. Thank you, Deanna. Seriously, we love you. Appreciate you you. so much. A nice little cherry on top, Zach, of what's been a great, great conversation tonight. She says, we need a quarterback. We also need some O-line depth. Center, definitely MHH for life. Well, you know, they did sign one today to kind of be a little bit of a veteran stopgap in case you missed that, uh, Deanna. And they are hedging on. Hey, they, they've invested a couple of uh, draft picks in back-to-back years in centers. We're going to give one of them a whirl, see what see what's what in 2024, Zach. You know, quietly, the Broncos have added three offensive linemen uh, on the open market. We talked about uh, Mustafa, the center today. They signed Matt Pert or Peart, whatever his name is, uh, offensive tackle. And they also signed last week Calvin Throck Morton, former Saints guard. So they've addressed all levels of the offensive line. And it just makes it easier, Deanna, to go into the draft of not pigeonholing yourself into a need, not having to take a center, not having to take a tackle. They'll do it when they feel it is necessary. Thank I you. would I would imagine it's pert, and I only say that because arguably the greatest drummer of all time, Neil Pert. Rush. That's how they pronounce it, and it's exactly, and it's spelled the same way. So I'm just going to assume it's it's pert. But then again, our friend he he started writing for us on Broncos uh, the last month or so. Jared, if you look at his last name spelled K O C H, you would think like uh, Koch, like. Uh, like a lot of famous people have had that name, for example, uh, one in particular, New York politician. But no, no, no. Cook, that's how his family pronounces their name, K-O-C-H, but pronounced Cook. So maybe it is Peart, Zach. You never know. But I'm still rolling. I think we're pretty safe to err on the side of Peart. We love pronunciations on this podcast, but we know how to pronounce Deanna Hendry's name. Thank you so, so much, Deanna. I think it's going to wrap it up for tonight. Unless, Sam, you object. No, but we got to give him. We got to give him a satisfaction. No, nope, right. this is the last super of the night. Go Broncos! Love you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, can't wait to see you on Sunday. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Sunday. Take care, and as always, go Broncos.